What's going on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 144 of Behind the Tool Belt with TC Backer Construction. Oh. Behind the Tool Belt is sponsored by Lead Scout. Find out more at leadscoutapp.com. TC Backer, TC Backer. Boom. TC Backer family. Episode 144. We are feeling good today, man. Yeah, yeah. We got the wonderful, the one, the only Tim Brown from Hook Agency in this bitch. Hey, let's, go. let's do yes. it. Yes, 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 yes. Let's do this. You look tan, dude. Have you been in Florida? I was in Florida just recently, and the spot I was at is getting hit at this moment with the, mm. the, the reverberations of a hurricane. So our hearts uh, and uh, I guess also some of our crews and salespeople yeah. are going yes. out. To, yeah. uh, you know, like a lot of roofers probably are headed there or, or right. thinking about rushing towards the storm, the storm chasers. Yeah. Right. Yes. You know, not that, that, you know, and that's became like sort of a stigma, I guess that statement yeah. mm -hmm. storm chaser, but think about that. Cause Tim, when I just was thinking that like when most people are running from the storm, mm -hmm. who do you think's, you know, running to the storm is, is a lot of people in our industry and salespeople mm -hmm. and, and construction companies and those those roofing companies that have boots on the ground now, I mean, they're, they're batting down the hatches and they're getting ready to, uh, you know, give hopefully some people peace Absolutely, of mind man. of, you know, knowing that they are there and grateful that they are there. Right. Yeah. It's a very overlooked thing, man, in our industry, the people that <clears throat> yeah. are willing to go and do that kind of stuff, you know, you know, instead of like you, like you said, Ty, instead of running away from the trouble, mm -hmm. they run to it. Um, cause I mean, we say this all the time. I mean, this, this is the biggest investment. You know, we're, we're protecting the biggest investment that you that most people have in their lives is their home. Um, and it starts at the roof, man. The exterior products on your home, it's it's the biggest investment. So uh, kudos yeah. to you guys for for getting that stuff done, yeah. man. And, and we wish you guys the best for sure. Yep, big shout yeah, out I there. Was like thinking about because I see TJ uh, McCormick, world's greatest roofer out there. And, uh, you know, he's up there with Matt Mulholland and they're they're streaming live. Um, and you know, the people from hail trace and stuff like that, it's like, geez, man, like, I just like, stay safe. You know, yeah. you're right. It does take some, some cojones. cojones. Yeah. Some you cojones can to, to get you out of the middle. Of that. I mean, yeah, I wish I, I, it definitely takes some, some brass balls. I wish I was out there right now. I feel like it's just interesting. And I, yeah, I kind of mm -hmm. wish I was there to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. A little envious for sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, I actually got, I got a notification from uh, the Weather Channel app today that apparently they issued a wind warning down there that they are very far and few between do they ever issue. Like they came up with this uh, certain, I guess you want to call it like a nat, like a emergency type broadcast type thing for this category for this type of category. And at the time that they invented it, whatever year that was, it actually took them. I think like 10 years before they actually ever even issued it. So like, that's how few and far between 
and just how serious this hurricane is that's that's touching down there so yeah. all our peeps in the roofing industry and all the people that watching from florida mm. man we're definitely definitely got you in our thoughts and hopefully you guys are staying safe yeah for real my father-in-law is down there and i'm sure everybody probably knows somebody right that that's down right. there it's um, a big retirement place yeah. man hold on hey vic i'm hearing some feedback i'm not sure if it's because tim doesn't have earbuds in or if my mic's too loud or somebody's i, I can try on some uh headphones if i need to too yeah. no, no stress just i know last week we struggled with that a little bit and mm -hmm. i thought okay same deal so mm -hmm. if anything when when tim's not talking maybe mute him sorry about that i think he's throwing some headphones in so i think we're gonna be good nice perfect can you still hear us good, Tim? Yes, I can't hear myself. These things are intense with the, the noise canceling, but I'll just pull one of you. I, I haven't gotten used to I got nicer headphones. I got the yep. beats, and I, I like, I'm not yes. used to them, yep. so it's kind of weird. Yes, yeah. believe me, I still haven't gotten used to them. I prefer yeah. not to wear headphones, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sorry sure. about that. I didn't mean to interrupt anybody, nah, but it listen. just I thought if we could try to fix it before – 56 minutes into it. <laughs> <laughs> so, me too. It's almost I like, like I, I am still hearing it. Still. No, that mic is not on. Okay. Is that mic on back at the. No. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't we'll know. We'll just yeah, we'll rock with the deal. So, oh no, Tim, tell us what, what you have been up to lately. Like, I know you've been on tour with Jen and TJ and a whole yeah. lot of really cool people. And I know Dallas is coming up in two weeks. So, yeah. so you want to start there and just kind of maybe give us the, the replay of like what's been happening, what's going on there yeah. before we kind of get into what you do. Sure. For, sure. For one in, I've been on tour with one industry, which is like, uh, I would say the main thing is promoting is offering financing more often, but then there's a lot of like leadership coach type people and then CEOs of roofing companies that have been speaking at some of these events. And mm -hmm. I think, um, I think ultimately the, the intention is to give it all away and be useful to roofing businesses. Um, and it's really just, it's been a good time. Like a lot of the people that are on it are just like, have been really interesting to learn from and stuff like that. So I get to speak on marketing and getting more leads. And I've gotten to kind of be alongside people talking about sales and leadership and, and you know, I'm learning a little bit about roofing. I'm not, I'm an honor, people, I'm an honorary member of the roofing industry, but I'm not really, you know, I'm not really a roofer. So it's nice of everyone right. to kind of like, I do feel taken in by the roofing industry and I'm grateful for yeah. that. Cause I, cause I make a lot of memes. So it's nice of people to kind of bring me in. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically it's been a good time. And I've been speaking to uh, roofers that I like, I think we've had like seven locations or something like that so far. Wow. Um, it's just been a good time and I've been helping put, put these events on. So yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, man. So, so from somebody that's not technically a, a mechanic or, or a roofer, um, yeah. I'm just curious, what's probably the biggest thing that you've taken from it? Because you, I heard yeah. you say that you've learned some things, but what's probably been mm -hmm. the biggest benefit of you being able to hang out with such cool people? Um, and what have you taken back to implement maybe in your company? Yeah, a lot of the stuff that's been useful to me is the leadership stuff. Like, I don't know. I mean, like, no one gives you a, a roadmap for business ownership. Like there's nothing, I mean, there's a lot of books, but they're all kind of like, you know, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So the closest thing I've ever gotten to is Traction or E-Myth Revisited, both really good books. But um, it's, the other side is leadership. No one gives you a, a blueprint for leadership. It feels like everyone's kind of making it up. And even some of the people that preach leadership, sometimes you're like, I mean, we're all fallible, right? You know, so it's really hard, but I've gotten like a bunch of nuggets, like really like solid uh, takeaways on leadership. And I need them because I feel, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to use this very much longer, but I feel like a young business owner and I feel like I need this shit like a lot. Like I need yeah. leadership is just, you know, as a young man too, I was a rebellious person you know like 20 even up into the mid 20s i like you know i just partied my ass off and all these different things so um i, I feel like i'm just starting to try to get a hold of my emotions and it's hard mm -hmm. when you're a, a business owner and a leader trying to be a leader and then i you know there's just there's a lot going on and it's hard man it's really hard to be a leader no one knows that i mean it's hard to say that to your employees without sounding like 
entitled or something like it's really hard being a leader but literally um there is different people in the business five of them over here want to do, go this way and five of them want to go this way and you have to like reconcile that so i think one of the biggest takeaways has been like as a company because we're now we're 22 people which is big it feels big to me um mm -hmm. you have to pivot slowly like everything is real slow pivots because you can't go and do a whole new crazy big thing you're i think it was uh i'm trying to remember which of the leadership uh speakers it was but it's basically like you're you're a ocean liner not a speedboat and like making these slower pivots like that. and that's mm -hmm. that's been that's been very useful and i like literally have to go undergo like a total emotional shift because i love doing crazy new big initiatives in my business right mm -hmm. no and this is a great topic i mean and, and you're right a lot of people don't like to talk about the uncomfortable stuff right like i'm not a very good leader i'm still learning how to be a leader and there is no chapter in a book that, right. that, mm -hmm. that teaches you how to handle certain situations like like, mm -hmm. I guess you got to learn how to read between the lines, I guess, or honestly, it, it, it's just experience. But the one thing that you touched on that I think about quite often, right, is that, you know, how you just said that uh, you're you're new in this, like you, you're you're still in like that feeling of like I'm a new business owner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, I can tell you one thing from my experience, right? Always feel like the new kid on the block, mm -hmm. but act like you're a million dollar company, right? Act as yeah. if. You're a hundred million dollar company. Whether if you got one truck, you wrap that motherfucker and you wrap that motherfucker like you got 15 of them on the road, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Always keep that mentality, that underdog mentality. Yeah. And don't forget where you come from, bum. Okay. So there's yeah. some humility and being humble in that. But but what has helped us because the at one point in time, I was the youngest person that worked for this company, right? Now I'm creeping up on one of the oldest motherfuckers that work in this company. So I've never lost that. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that mentality that I was always the new kid on the block. I, I was always mm -hmm. the underdog. And it's, it's like once you get that complacency of and, and you think you have arrived and then you become unteachable and all of those things. And trust me, I've been through at the peaks and valleys in my career and the ups and downs. And, and uh, you know, it, it's taken a lot to, to mature. Yeah. And I think a lot of times leadership comes from just growing up and, and having empathy. And like you said, you know, implementing something, you can't do it. And, and this is pure experience where we've totally dropped the ball where we tried to implement like a, a new CRM to the entire company, right? Like at one time, mm -hmm. you know, from, lear from that um, experience, I've found that you do it with like, let's say you said you had 22 people, right? Well, you just get five of them and you start implementing that process yeah. to five of them, right? Because let's mm -hmm. face it, nobody likes change, whether it's good change or bad change, right? But you pick like the five best people that you think that will will will, will mold to it quicker and, and want to mm -hmm. pick up on it and, and are ready for change, right? And then what happens is you get two or three other people and they're like, what are they doing over there? Right now, other people start start to get interested in like, wow, what 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 are they doing now? It becomes a good idea because they think it's a good idea, right? So then mm -hmm. now you got eight people that are interested and intrigued, and those five people that have been doing it can help you train these three other people that are interested. And the next thing you know, there's like this gravitational pull over to like, what are these guys doing over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's pretty cool because now they want to be a part of it. Even the guy that was like, fuck, screw this, like this, mm -hmm. I didn't for this or that there's always that one dude or, mm -hmm. or gal right that that just yeah. seems like they're they're good and they're for the most part they're a team player but they they just don't conform well to change and i'm mm -hmm. i'm one of them right? right and uh i fear change a lot of times it's just because i don't understand something even if it's for the betterment of the company right if i don't understand it i don't like it even if yeah. i know deep down in my gut that it that it's that's the right thing to do or it's good for everybody it's just i still it's kind of like everything has claw marks on it you mm -hmm. know what i mean and i guess that goes into playing you know being being uncomfortable be, you mm -hmm. know being comfortable being uncomfortable sometimes like as a leader you kind of just you go through growing pains yourself yeah you know Why along do you with think, yeah well, okay, so roofing industry. Let me outsider. I am kind. Of, I'm okay. I'm not really an outsider anymore. But not as I've come in, yeah. I, but I, yeah. I, I've been coming into this industry, and I will say, leadership. There's a lot more people getting a lot more attention talking about sales 
and talking about storms and talking about drama and talking mm-hmm. about all kinds of, you know, politics and different things. So why does it, why is leadership over here like a skinny gaunt topic that no one talks about? Like, it's like this, I, I can it's not that. enough attention. Yeah. Why don't people yeah. talk about it? Because it, the, because the real true leaders are few and far between. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I feel like a, a, a true leader doesn't need to tell everyone that they're a leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's not something that um, I think you're given that you give yourself. That that's, title. That, yeah. that's, that's something that's earned. And yeah. um, it's just recognized by your peers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, um, I don't think there's enough of it. And, and you know, actually, let me rephrase that. Um, it's not spoken about because it doesn't need to be spoken about. Mm. In, in a sense of like, hey, this guy's a leader. You know what I mean? But I do agree that there should be more talks on how yeah. um, you can transform the culture in mm. your company mm. because that starts with good leadership, right? And Ty, to touch on your point, um, you know, what we talk about here at TC Backer a lot is like it's, you know, where you were saying about how like sometimes Pete, you got that one guy mm-hmm. and a lot of that I think has to do with, because people are comfortable with, with, okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like mm-hmm. the process is working. Um, yeah, it could be tweaked, but mm-hmm. guess what? We have good sales. Um, we're profitable. Um, everyone seems to be happy, but you can't tell me that it can't be better. And sometimes people are just comfortable with, okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we talk about that a lot. That's where we're focusing yeah. on right now here. Yeah is like yeah dude shit's shit's great and i'll even say it's more it's better than okay it's great yeah but we're not we're not we're we're not comfortable with that you know what i mean yeah. we, we want to we, we know that there's more ty likes to say there's another layer to peel back on the onion you know mm-hmm. there, there's constantly more that you can strive for to better improve yourself and yeah. sometimes you just have that one person that's like you know i'm good man my sales are good i'm getting a paycheck every week um I'm good. Mm. I don't need to do all this extra work. Like we're, we're yeah. okay guys, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And they can be culture killers. Right. For sure. For sure. It's, yeah. it's definitely, it's definitely hard to pick up the slack of that other person that doesn't want to mm-hmm. conform to that because right. it's a, it's a team effort. You right. have to, and everyone has to be on just, the same team. When page. you said that just made me think that's, that's why people say, you know, hire slow, let go quick. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? That mm-hmm. way you don't have those culture right. killers in there, but I mean, through, through everything yeah. we've been through, we were hiring quick and letting, letting go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ty, we yeah, just yeah, that, that happens, man. That, that, it's been a weird, it's been a weird hiring time this last year. And, and yeah. I'm guessing the same with your guys' space. And so I had somebody came from recommendation and then I just went really quick because I was like, recommendation from a solid person, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't do my normal process. But they vetted themselves out quick, too, because I like talk. I mean, I don't say I just want people to buy in. That's it. You don't need to like this isn't a cult. You don't need to drink the Kool-Aid, but you do need to buy in and do your job mm-hmm. and like actually care. Like that's that's basics. It doesn't you know, like it's not just checking, doing the work. It's also buying in enough that like we can talk to you about stuff related to the company you know what i mean some people don't want to talk about anything outside of their job we need everyone to be like because there's always connection points to the other services to the other stuff to the other like if you're in sales there's there's connection points to service you know like there's and you have to buy in to be able to give the connection well otherwise you just end up kind of being your own person out here and it doesn't you know even really high performers can be terrible at connecting to the other parts of the business. And that's, that's where you get disjointed stuff. And it's like, yeah, your stuff's good, but the stuff around you is broken because you're not, right. you're not buying in enough to right. connect to the other not parts of the business. Well enough. Yeah. We right. call it over overlap, you know, so many things overlap. And, and, right. and I think Tim, to, to elaborate more on your point where I think you were trying to go with this was, is that, and we talk about it all the time. If you do your job, then I can do my job. Yeah. Right. If I'm worried about you not being able to do your job efficiently, then that pulls me away from my job to to follow up on with you to make sure that you're doing your job Mm -hmm. or cleaning up what you weren't doing because 
you're not making that connection. You're, you're doing just enough to get by, but then the rest of the stuff is like, like you said, is broke around us. But then the rest of us are like trying to clean up the broken pieces, mm -hmm. right? And, and while our backs are turned to what we're actually supposed to be doing, more shit's getting screwed up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like it goes back to the, the, we call it the circle of safety. Yeah. Which uh, came from a book that we read mm -hmm. and uh, which made a lot of sense to us that, you know, within our circle of safety, there should be nobody that we have to worry about not doing their job. But yet sometimes mm -hmm. there's a little chink in the chain, but that's when you need to speak up and say, hey, I'm falling behind. So then right. we can all rally around that person and pick them up. Absolutely. Because, I mean, let's face it, guys, we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. um, some people have bad days. Some people have bad weeks. Some people have bad months. Some people have bad years. You know what I mean? And like, um, you know, one, one thing that, you, that we can attest to to our team, I can't speak for every team, but like like Ty said, you know, if someone's not performing well, it's not like that's just going to go undone. Like someone's going to pick those pieces up, but you can only do that for so long mm -hmm. without knowing exactly what the issue is and, and what this person's struggling with. And, you know, one analogy that we use up here is like, um, if you if you can envision like a hallway, right, that has that's that's shaped in a square, you got a person standing at every corner, right? One person can see down two halls. They can see the other two people standing there looking down the corners they can't see. You know what I mean? So like it's it's our job to make sure that we're looking at, down mm. our corner so that everyone else can see down their corner. So you have to rely when, when you're talking about the overlaps and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that, that your team is able to look behind the corners and look down the corners that you can't see around. You know what I mean? Because let's face it, man, if you got a, if you got a bad project manager, it don't matter how good your sales are mm -mm. because the job isn't going to be managed properly. Um, if you got mm -hmm. bad installers, it doesn't matter how, how well your sales are or how well your project management is because you got bad installers. Um, if you have a bad process inside your office, then it don't matter on any of those things because right. you, you're, you're screwing up your books or like there, there's so many things that overlap and the creativity that comes from those people interacting and me being able to say like, Hey, you know, I have experience over here. This is what we run into over here. So maybe when you're doing this, try to think of this from this angle, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that I mean, they all overlap and it's, it's a great point. Very good. And yeah. I think like we're, we went from leadership and now I think like going into the culture thing is like the ability I do think it's super important to have the ability to uh, to disagree with each other. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, I used to, my company used to be very hunky dory where we would not, we wouldn't, dis ever, no one would disagree with each other. And like, what you're saying is like, you have to be able to talk to each other and say, Hey, I think this could be better in this way. And mm -hmm. it's like, it hurts. Sometimes it feels like you're confronting somebody, but you have to be able to do that. And you have to like invite that, I think in your culture a little bit, because it's, mm -hmm it's very hard it's it's i'm minnesotan we're known for uh for being passive aggressive which is like mm -hmm. not saying what you want to say and so like i have to invite i lived down in texas for five years it helped me kind of get out of that and i i have to invite people to kind of like all right now t and sometimes it requires like i don't care if you get a little angry i mean you got to kind of get into it a little bit like there has to be some conflict occasionally Mm -hmm. Yeah, there should be some kind of passion there. Yeah, it's called healthy, healthy friction. Yeah, there's, kind there's, candor, right? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with, yeah. with healthy friction because right. like you said, also it helps the competitiveness, yeah. right? It, it kind of helps push and drive, you know, the team because like you said, if, if, if everything was just honky dory, there's no growth, period. Yeah. Right. Like you got to you got to experience some kind of friction, some yeah. kind of animosity, some kind of issue, you know, mm -hmm. to to learn from it. If you can keep your ears open wide enough and, and not stop pointing the finger and realize that, you know, if you're pointing one finger, you got three pointing back at yourself. And that mm -hmm. goes back into leadership too. always recognizing that we had a, a not a situation, but I'm just going to call it a situation where I felt like I left the team down. Right. Because of whether it was lack of training or whatever, to be able to to own that shit and and if you if your team around you can can watch you own your shit it becomes mm -hmm. a lot easier for your team to start owning their shit mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. when stuff happens and if they know you're not yeah. going to freak out if they make a mistake or something like that yeah. they can come running to you and be like look man i made a mistake but this is what i think we can do to fix it right you know you teach them how you know how to think not what to think yeah. right. you know and i i ran it the other way it was like dude my door everybody was knocking on my door nonstop. Boom, 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 boom. Because nobody knew how to think on their own, mm -hmm. right? Not yeah. that it still doesn't happen today, but less and less and less over the mm -hmm. years, people have stopped knocking on my door because 
I don't have to tell them what to think. They already know how to think today. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what a big thing that as leaders, we have to encourage them to, to think on their own. Right. And also embrace them when they make a mistake, because we have to allow them to make mistakes because if they don't make mistakes, they're never going to learn. Right. Or if we're yeah. running in there and trying to catch, you know, oh, no, no, no don't, don't, don't do that because it, it, it's not going to work. Well, sometimes their way does work too. Mm -hmm. Probably 75% mm -hmm. of the time works and, and, and probably 80% of the time it works better than what you thought that it was the way that it was going to work anyhow. But if they do make a mistake, you know, it's how we respond to it and, and look at it like a learning experience. Like actually something did happen today and, and, and a couple of people came to me and I'm like, okay, what can we learn from this? That was my first knee jerk reaction to the situation was, is okay, what, what can we learn from this? And they, everyone got quiet <laughs> for a second and they were like, and then they started rattling shit yeah, off. Like, right. oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. We, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. we won't know not to do that again or, yeah. you, you know, yeah. and it was kind of cool because me, I, my, my first in, instantaneous response wasn't to be an asshole and freak out for once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can relate. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, yeah. So it was like, I think it might've threw them off a little yeah. bit too, but you know, that's, we're growing, man. You know, if, if and if we're not growing, we're going right. Not yeah. every day is going to be great, man. And that's the, that's the, 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 the raw truth of it all. There's no perfect. I mean, even John Maxwell or whoever, whoever preaches about leadership is not perfect, dude. Everybody's got bones in their closet. Everybody's got yeah. character defects. <laughs> Everybody's got shortcomings, yeah. right? I don't yeah. care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely, so, man. Preach it. Yeah. Fucking preach it. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's we could stuff. go, we could go uh from leadership to leads. Yes. That, that, yeah, that's there you go. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. Let's do so you know, I, I talked about we're gonna share the one secret ingredient to your marketing success. Yes. Please and tell us. So if you've got a website, I know there's people on here with small businesses. I know that there might be some other roofing companies watching. I know just this is the one thing that actually 90% of roofing companies get wrong. And I would probably venture to guess 90% of uh, companies get wrong on their website, which is, drum roll please. Subscribe for $5.99 a month. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Boop. It was um, okay. Sorry. They make it, they make it about themselves, not the customer. So a good way to remember this is get your wee wee off the website and like it's because people say we we do this we 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 do this we and hey we get it you have to say what you do but how could you change those sentences to you you want a reputable roofing company you want whatever it is that you sell right you have this pain point and so it's it's surprising. Once you see this, you like once you really get this in your brain, get your wee wee off your website. You will see it everywhere you go. And what it does is it makes somebody feel like you're just you're you're posturing and you're like you know we're all proud of what we do. I understand, but you're you you're putting yourself above them a little bit. You're saying why you're so cool when what they want to know is hey, how does this company fix my problem? And so a lot of people will say this as you want to talk about the benefits, not the features, the benefits, not the features. So a feature would be like, I guess, the catch all or something, you know, whatever it happens, some something that your company does that's like a, a specific item. And the benefit is like we make sure that, you know, debris doesn't get on any of your bushes or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So really thinking about that another big one is lead with pain i mean it's empathetic to talk about what pain they might be featured and like for instance with contractors is like you know, like maybe some contractors aren't calling you back but we will you know or we I said the we word uh, <laughs> you want to you want a contractor that will call you that will be in com consistent communication with you or whatever it happens to be so you kind of you learn their pain points and then you talk about them more often. That's the that's the one thing that I think will really help. And every 
most roofers kind of have this down in the sales process or like a lot of like people your size or you know a little bit bigger roofing companies they have it down they make sure they're talking to the customer about their problems but in their marketing over here marketing always gets the shaft you know like marketing mark like you get the best people on sales like there's people making big money and then marketing over here not no offense marketers but like it gets a little bit it falls by the wayside a little bit it, it gets like sometimes it doesn't get the 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 love that sales does and it's just applying this this concept of talk more about them in the sales process to your marketing which is that's that's the one big important ingredient that a lot of people don't get and i'm inviting you to go look at your website look at how many times it says we mm -hmm. and uh and he's off the website yeah are, are, we you, the website. are you trying to say something like <laughs> we got wee-wees on our website yeah, do we have wee-wees on our website or something Dude, i didn't look at your website right before this but i would say if, uh, if you're part of the 90 percent, you might have some wee-wees on your website probably right we offer <laughs> yeah we offer financing that's a big yeah. one i mean I, yeah. I i'm guilty of that because we want people to know we offer financing especially you know, now we want you to talk i want you to talk about your stuff i want you to talk about it i want you to give it all but i'm just saying kind of like a little reframe mm -hmm. like you you might want to take advantage of our promotions right instead of okay you know, we offer financing you might want to take a, a, that calling financing promotions that's yeah. from uh that's from the big dog, uh, A1. What's the Tommy Mello from A1 Garage Door? He's got a he's got a freaking gigantic garage door company. He says call all always call financing promotions. Um, but there's a lot of like little things like that. It's not. I'm not saying don't talk about your company. I'm saying frame mm -hmm. it just a little bit differently to be like, yeah. you want this. You want you know what I mean? Like you're training them. This or something like that. Right? Yeah. No, I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's, that's great. That's good insight. That is that it's is really play. good. For, for real okay let's talk about seos man that seems to be a hot topic here lately on uh social media at least it, yeah. the threat that i see mm -hmm. what what so, what is an seo start from the basic yeah. for for a knucklehead all right search engine optimization it's a beautiful thing it's i love it because i made my business this way so i'm i love and i'm saying before i even offered it as a service i made it by ranking for web design I made it by ranking the top of the searches for Minneapolis web design. So um, it, like, I love that type of thing, like where, where you can not have a lot of capital, but still build a business. Cause I was able to do it myself, which is really cool. I mean, all it is is content and content could be a page on your website or it could be an article, like a page like service plus city you have a page for that service plus city. So different cities around you, different suburbs. And it could be, uh, you know, a blog post about the biggest trends in your industry, right? So there's different kinds of content, but what it does is it makes your sales funnel. It basically what I'd say is you think about it like a funnel. The top of the funnel is awareness. So it cranks open the, the blog posts are cranking up on the top of the funnel awareness to get more people in to the top of the funnel because they come into the website and they can learn about different topics. And the bottom side of the funnel is let's say service pages or like gutters or whatever it happened, whatever, whoever's watching this, whatever you do and having those specific services or products or whatever it happens to be and cranking that open. So you're essentially increasing the amount of, uh, you know, surface area for your, your website to the world, because there's every single piece of content is like a bait is a piece of bait on the internet that gets people to come into this website. And you have the ability to just crank open that. You don't need a, you don't need a marketing company. You can do this without that. You, all you can do is write. Like in, in writing is easy, dude. I mean, like, this doesn't have to be like your master's thesis. This is like you could have your like wife sit out and write these things. Now there is, you know, things that we do that's a little above that. But the point is, is you can get started on this and really make a dent. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, so that's content. Then links is the second part. Um, 
I know people don't want me to go this too deep on this, but I'm telling you this stuff is cool. And once you get it down, you're, it feels powerful. Mm -hmm. So links are anywhere from around the internet. When somebody links to your website, it's like a vote for your website. So this website is important. And if it's a place where it's a vote, let's say it's your local news station and they did a, 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 a video or like a segment on ice dams or I don't know if you guys have ice dams in your area. But, oh, yeah. And you were on that. So like definitely when, when the local news says what's up, answer the phone and get on there because it's a beautiful thing. Um, not just for PR, but tell them to link to your website. Say, hey, as you put this out on your site, can you link to this our website? And so All right. Great. those links are huge. And then the last part is technical. And I'm going to give a real like real quick examples of technical changes on your website. It's basically improvements to your website. A couple examples real quick are like making the website fast. You can have like, if you're on WordPress, you can put in like a caching plugin, like WP fastest cache. Um, there's ways that make this easy. Yoast SEO and rank math are two plugins also that allow you to um, better improve your website for search engines. Now that goes, it does, that part starts to get a little bit more complicated. So I know that not everyone's going to, but those are two ways to start, you know, make it fast, upload one of these plugins and those things help get it. It gets, gets a popping, but SEO, the big important po point is it makes Google love your website. You want Google to love that website and we want more surface area so we can get more people into this site and thus more leads. Mm. No, that's good stuff. Yeah, that, I mean, that was a lot of information that I think a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable divulging. And I think I've even yeah. seen or heard people not complain necessarily, but bust your balls a little bit by like giving away all the good shit. Would, would you, you know, agree? Yeah. No, this stuff's all out there if you want to go look. So like if you go hook agency, SEO basics, you can mm -hmm. get three things if I would do if nothing else for your website. So hook agency, SEO ba basics, it will give all this away. You're going to find it either way. I want to be the one to give it to you. And that's mm -hmm. kind of a little bit of the SEO strategy in general, which is like you are giving away a lot of information and part of this. If you're writing a lot of content, you're getting you're giving information. So it tends to be the, the MO of of uh, seo companies is is you kind of got to give it away you, you can't mm -hmm. sell you can't sell what you can't show you know right. like so i i think there's there's benefits to being able to talk about what you do and i mean most people a lot of people in our once you get past a certain revenue point for instance for roofing companies or whoever else like we work with a lot of roofing companies but they're just like yeah that's sweet and maybe do some of it and then they're just like you guys have a system you know take it you know, so mm -hmm. like that's that's our business model. There's other people that sell courses and stuff like that. And I think that there's validity to that. Um, but yeah, there's this is our model. And I, I, I like it because I like giving away as much as I possibly can for free. And I try. I try to give it all yeah. away. Yeah. Hook agency SEO basics dot com. Is that what yeah, it is? Just if you just Google hook agency SEO basics and you should be able to find this article and it's. Uh, it literally will. Tr I'm trying to help people take action. I know that's hard to give all this, like, get you to take action on this podcast or on this show. But um, if you Google that, it will literally give you specific actions to take one by one that will significant. What is the result? The result is more traffic and more leads. And like I said, it's fun. And I try to convince people it's fun. I know some people won't want to do this, but I ultimately think it's a very powerful aspect of uh, small business. But SEO is only one. Free. So like, yeah, free. yeah. No, that's yeah. good stuff because I, I know yeah. I learned a lot of stuff. So I'm hoping our viewers have learned a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, um, what uh, what what would you say about uh, uh, people relying on just one source of of yeah. uh, lead coming in? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. And whether it's whether it's uh, door knocking or or over here SEO or Google or whatever, like I believe you should be diversifying. Like, it scares me, so, and it it happens at different times in our business, right? It scares me when we accidentally go into just one, like we have one main. I, I mean, to be real with you, for us right now, Facebook. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but Facebook 
we just get like a lead a day almost on Facebook. It's kind of like it goes in and out, but yeah. it, it's kind of crazy. And I, it kind of scares me. So I'm like, you got to have other types of lead gen. So I have different ones than maybe I'd suggest for roofing companies because we're B2B, but, um, you know, business to business. But if you're um, of a roofing company or whatever, I would say like you should have top like five lead gen systems. You should have five different ones <clears throat> uh, that are solid because I think that there's, um, and if I was to give my five, I'd say, if I was a roofer, so like I said, I'm not, but I'd say diligent referral systems. Maybe one day, Chris. Chris looking at me like this guy's gonna be this guy's gonna have a roofing company at some point. He wants to be a roofer uh-huh. so bad, right? Yeah, now. yeah. I do. I get kind of uh, yeah, I do. Um, so you talk about diligent referral systems. So, like an example, God, I give this guy so many shout-outs. Uh, restoration referral system with Matt Danskin. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he taps in. Have you guys had him on the show yet? No, no, no. I actually you got the pleasure to meet him out at uh, Storm into the New Era for the you first time. I have him on the show, bro. You should have him on the mm-hmm. show. So, well, I mean, if I guess your guys' audience is not all roofers, though. But yeah, basically, like getting in with insurance agents and actually create not just as an individual, but as a team of salespeople, especially in like the off season, if you can't, if you're not docking, knocking doors or certain things get kind of turned off a little bit when it's cold, like getting out to those people, the nuances of what you say and all that, creating a system out of it, I think is important. But anything with referral systems, like I love referral systems. My second one would be social media. And, you know, wherever the homeowners are in your area, like where are they spending the most time? Get on that social media. I would, one of mine would be door knocking, even if it's just around jobs. Um, I don't know. Do you guys do some door knocking? Like how much door knocking does your business do? We canvas. We call it canvassing or scouting yeah. neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah. So like, that's a solid one. Like a lot of people will, you know, be a little skittish about that, but like, that's a real one, mm-hmm. um, especially around jobs and talking about, Hey, we have a house in your area, especially if it's insurance covered by insurance. Um, SEO and I think Google ads, those would be my five um, as a B2B company. And if you have other kinds of businesses watching this, like I love events, um, events are good and uh, speaking and what else do I do? I mean, I do a podcast, you know, like those types of things, but basically yeah. like, yeah, Mr. yeah memes. Memes. do me all your meme, your, your meme capabilities, man. Janice said that your memes are on fire. Yeah. Hey, For- hey, I appreciate that Janice. No, yeah. and, and I agree home shows. We do quite a few home shows right. during the winter months, right? And we set the appointments at the home show. So that mm. was something that we caught on to probably about two or three years ago. Mm. I don't know. For whatever reason, I kind of felt like like a home show was more for just branding, yeah. right? So we got like a real solid sales team and then had discovered like, well, Christ, we're like, we're locking down like 50 to 70 appointments. Right at these how did you homes, do that, man. I don't, I still think of it as brand. So, how did you do that? How did you make right. that? Switch? Seriously, I did too. Well, because we we're, the great, we're the greatest <laughs> show on earth, we take up half the floor at any home show that we go to. It takes us about right. two days to set up, and it's like mm-hmm. ringling farm and Bailey's. Yeah, you I need mean, tasers, bro. Yeah, we, we bring tasers, like, we bring the cornhole, you know, boards, and <laughs> yeah. and uh you can't you have to come to our booth and plus we set up a coffee yeah. shop this year we set up a whole entire coffee mm. shop we called it roofers roofers roast, roofers roast. Yep. Um, we had mm. a local coffee company donate coffee coffee and they trained our people a couple of our people to be baristas for the week nice. and uh that the, the aroma because when i was a kid i'll tell you where i got this idea from when I was a kid, my family's always kind of sort of owned like a restaurant and a bar, right? And my dad's half carny. And I don't know if you know what a carny is or not, but <laughs> he had me barbecue and chicken alongside the road. Dude, we we did bullpen parties for sometimes. <laughs> and the first thing he always had me do at these functions is is I had to get the red I had to get the onions and the green peppers on the grill. First thing, even before the sausage and the hot dogs and and the cheesesteak, yeah. like I had to get the onions and the green peppers on and get that aroma through the state, you know, through the, mm. through the stands or the stadium or the arena or wherever it was that he mm-hmm. had me doing all this crazy shit, right? So I'm mm. sitting there chopping onions and, and green peppers and lo and behold, like there would be a line 
of 50 people there just because of mm. that aroma. So I thought, what can we do? Because I don't mm. want to be cooking Italian sausages inside <laughs> this home show, right? <laughs> So I was like, what can we come up with? So I thought coffee, what's better than fresh ground coffee, bro? Yeah. Like for real and an espresso it. machine. So little did we know, I bet this year or last, dude. I guess it was this year we had to, it was, and then of course we have our podcast set up too, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. everyone's coming over and we're inviting uh, the other vendors that are there, even, even our, our worthy rivals that if they're set up there, we brought them on. Mm -hmm. out in uh hanover like we just make it fun and if anything else we don't get anything else out of it the fellowship and the camaraderie that is developed between our people at Mm -hmm. these functions is top notch like it it, it, Mm -hmm. we 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 grow so much by the the setup the 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 entire throughout the entire show and then then the cleanup and then we're off to the next show. So it goes for about two or three months straight, like weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend. And we'll hit every local home show. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. The The last home show that we did was Gettysburg. That yep. was the last one. Mm-hmm. And we Adams had, County. We, yep. we, we set that one up really slick, man. So like normally how our, we're usually like kind of right in the center of the, of, of the floor plans. So like, we kind of have like a, a nice flow how we set our stuff up but out at this one man was my favorite because we had the way that our booth is set up we almost had like a 10 by 20 section behind our our st- our setup that you know when we because this is one of our display walls that we actually yeah, this used was to the use. original og yeah but yeah. It, it has windows built into it because you know we have our own brand of windows and shit if you guys did not know that we have uh weather yeah. buster windows our by tc backer yeah. but um Anyways, that wasn't even part of the point, but I was just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we set up I, these TVs on the opposite side. Spot. Yeah, dude, I got you. <laughs> um, we set up these TVs on the on the wall that everyone would walk by, and we were able to broadcast our show on those TVs. And whenever we weren't live, we would have the Behind the Tool Belt by TC Backer logo on there with a ticker that would say going live in, you know, so many odd seconds. And any time that we were live, we'd be up on that feed, and people could see us through the windows and it, it, if nothing else, it, it sparks curiosity because mm-hmm. they're like, what the hell are these guys doing over here? Right. So and oh, then strategically yeah. right behind us, we got the coffee brewing and everything. So, I mean, it's it's great, man. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's good. That's that's very inspiring. I will say RoofCon, I know they're going to have like 20 shows going at one time. Like the amount of podcasts going live in that sucker mm-hmm. is going to be crazy. I mean, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's gonna be Nonetheless, great. Nonetheless, it will be fun. It will be fun. I just, I'm just letting you guys know. There, dang, there's a lot of. Co- like, last time I was there, it was like literally, like I was walking by like seven podcasts at one time. It's a lot of. Yeah, yeah. it's probably gonna be even even more than it was last yeah. year, man. Oh it's yeah, it looks like it's like at least double, like as, as like the vendor area for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It's I know we're looking forward to that. Yeah, really. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to bring you guys either then or before then. I think we'll have. A, so you talked about smell and the power of smell. Hook Agency is going to have its own cologne. Oh, I'm trying to figure out if I should call it secret, the secret sauce or if I should call it smells like more leads. But we're, oh, we're having like white labeled cologne. It's it's going to smell like Creed Aventus. And I'm like, I'm going to, so I'm going to, I got to get you guys a bottle of that. So yeah, definitely. That, but kind oh. of a fun, a fun way to utilize smell. I'm always like, we have a signature scent in the office. It's like a what like a oil or whatever that I've been like bringing like around the office and we have our own smell. I like believe in like smell marketing or something like that. Like yeah. I believe, all all of the scents. Yeah. Or all of, yeah. The, I'm, the to, I'm gonna have to hook you up with my girl, man. Yeah. Just to plug my girl real quick, she has a yeah. uh, a small business that she does where she makes uh, wickless candles and um, wax melts and stuff that she makes homemade. Really? And all that stuff. She's got a ton of different stuff. So I'll shoot you yeah, a website. She can like do. She can do like branding on it and stuff like that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you should. I you should check the website out, man. It's, it's pretty dope. All right. I'll, I'll have it? her. I'll have her. Uh, it's better baked. Better baked bakery. Better baked. Com. Yep. Sweet. I'll better check baked it out. Bakery. It, man. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I love. I love doing, dude. Swag. Oh yeah, I didn't even say swag as part of like the lead gen strategies, but like I don't know. I can't always tell if that's like. I just love it. I don't know if it's lead gen, but I love doing swag and like I have mm-hmm. a bomb. Like I had, I did a live this morning with like I have a bomber jacket and I've got like I just like doing weird custom swag and shit. Like I love having a company because I love brand. I love that. Like somebody once told me they're like, 
Hey, are you considering selling? Like if I, if I had a million bucks or whatever for you, and like, I knew he was just messing with me cause he was a competitor. And I'm like, you don't have a million bucks for me, bro. Um, <laughs> but, but I remember being like, dude, I can't, I couldn't do it anyways. Cause I like my shirts too much. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and we're big on brand and swag yeah, too. That's, yeah. that's the swag. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like if you said, if it generates leads or not, but it yeah. does create brand awareness when, when yeah. half of York city is wearing a hooded sweatshirt, when, <laughs> but it, as soon as it hits 50 degrees and we've done that, like we, 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 somebody just mentioned it here. We have a big, uh, food, not a food drive, but we served about 725 plates of, of Turkey. We deep fried about what? 60 turkeys 60 last year. Turkeys we shut like down that. a whole city block in New York city and we bring over 300 hooded sweatshirts to, yeah. to hand out to the less fortunate and, and, that's, uh, that's and everybody true, that can, anybody can come by. It's not, it's not profiled to anybody. Anybody right. can come down get a plate of food. Uh, we started it during COVID because it just seemed like there was so much negativity. And then the, um, the amount of people that were going without, Right. And uh, we were in such a great place at that time. And, and we felt like we felt the need that we needed to really help help the community out. And that's when we started this year will be our third annual 21 Turkey Salute. And the name came from 21 was because the Guinness Book of World Records was 20 turkeys. You probably heard the story a hundred times, Tim. I'm sorry if you have. I, have, I haven't actually, but that's actually super cool. Like, uh, yeah. I think like, yeah, stuff like that's fun. And I mean, like having a small business, like. Mm-hmm. You're probably like me where you're not trying to milk it for every last like dollar of profit that you can. Cause like, <laughs> I'm guessing Ty, I'm not saying that you're balling or anything, but I'm guessing you have the things you need and you feel pretty good about it. So like, yeah, I'm comfortable. that's a cool, people don't know that about like a lot of small business owners are some of the most generous people that I know. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I like literally like, you know, when people act like there's like a ton of greed here, I mean, maybe in big corporations, but like the different, like small businesses, man, small businesses, so many of them are like super generous and make the community like way better because like you feel generous because you're like, dang, dude, I got like, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for everything I got. And like, I don't know, that's a very common thing I see with small businesses and even ones that aren't like using, you know, not most of them aren't using it for marketing all the time either. Like, you know, like stuff that they do just because it feels good. And maybe, maybe for their team, you know, Mm -hmm. too, like it's to help our teams feel good. Like I feel, I I feel like it's, it's a good strategy to help your team feel good. And it's like, I've seen a lot with small businesses. So I like, I'm, I love that about small business. It's definitely great for the culture. If, if, if you need something, you're searching for something that to help the culture of your company, no matter what shape it's in. Let's say that you just feel like there's no hope, right? Mm-hmm. Get get involved with with helping the community. Get your team, shut your shop down, sh- pay them for the day, and go feed the less fortunate ones. And and right away you'll just start feeling this this fellowship and camaraderie of those that don't normally mm-hmm. talk, like the the production team and the office you know, admins and the sales, everyone that day, you know, just, just bond and come together. And then they bring their kids and their wives and their families. And it's like, you thought your day was bad. Come on down here for the day once and, 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 and serve food with us. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? It's like, and, yeah. and right away you forget about anything that you thought that might've been going on in your, in your life or whatever. And, or, or you realize, God, you know, how, how blessed are we? You, for real you know what i mean like how how good do we really have it we had no idea how good we had it until we go down into the trenches and we have a pretty big um homeless uh community i guess for mm-hmm. for lack of better terms there's a lot of homelessness and and drug addiction and mental health um in your county and and it, it shows because there's more recovery houses per capita than probably any other city in the state of pennsylvania every mm-hmm. other home in new york cities is recovery related somehow halfway house recovery house something um and and it it shows it shows Mm -hmm. on the streets you drive down the street at at 11 a.m or 11 p.m at night and you'll see it they they're sleeping on the church stoops um the the homeless shelters fill up Mm -hmm. and uh you know it's just something that uh that's we and we decided to focus on there's one particular church that allows the people to kind of like sleep 
in the yard and and around the church and stuff like that and because the homeless shelter is across the street so when it fills up pastor joel kind of like takes these people in mm -hmm. and uh when we first started to get into charity several years ago it was like we were all over the place we were in lancaster yeah. county we were here we were over there and it's like we we met pastor joel we were introduced to him and and we we made a conscious decision to, to focus all of our energy or all of our charitable energy to one um facility right so we could actually make an impact so right. we've we've donated food we've had food drives already where we've given them the most what was it this year like six thousand pounds of food uh, yeah it was something something crazy man That's... you know right in august or what when was that june before that was june it lasted yeah. till august so the amount of food that we gave them lasted like four months and it was like how many families were they feeding dude like 1500 families it, it was a Something. lot man it was a lot and I, I know that last year when we did it it was the biggest that they ever had and i think that we met i think we went over a little bit this year um from from last year we wanted to double it with um, the inflation quite, it was almost impossible yeah we we didn't quite get there because just dude shit was just so expensive man mm -hmm. but yeah. um you know the the to to touch on your point ty i mean the first time that we ever did that was was when we did that roof for the people in Lancaster. Yep. And it's like the feeling that you get, um, you know, like Ty said, that it's, you know, all your problems that you think are so important, they it, it's crazy. They go away. I mean, we uh, I brought my girl down to um, the turkey salute this year for her first time mm -hmm. um, and she cried the whole way home um, yeah. because it just just the touching and and the the realization of number one there were so many kids there that um you know i i guess there was a comment that was made that like they didn't know where they were going to go to sleep tonight you know what i mean and it's like mm -hmm. the things that we take for granted every day man you know what i mean that yeah. you know it, god it could be so much worse clean so, socks yeah exactly clean, clean socks, dry fresh clean yep. dry clothing you know yep. what i mean and and you know ty ty led off with a with a really powerful um uh intro to our our business meeting that we have that we have every tuesday um and you know he he made a comment about how you know we we really don't realize how far our reach is and how many lives that we're actually affecting just by doing our jobs every day you know what i mean not mm. to mention the community things that we do but just by doing our jobs every day what we're allowed yes, to do what that allows us to do right and it's like yeah and, and it just so happened when he was saying this i didn't even say this yet so this is the first time he's going to hear it but while he was saying this i i remembered that it was like one of our first nights that it got really cold overnight right and i guarantee you there was people in york city that were warm last night because of what we did three years ago mm -hmm. you know what i mean like they they had they had sweatshirts and 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 stuff to to be warm that impact is still having an impact three years later. So like, I mean, I got goosebumps just talking yeah. about it right now. Like it's, it's, uh, it's definitely cool, man. And, and I can't speak enough on, on the impact that it has with your team. Cause like Ty said, you know, and again, even with the home shows, I mean, you get, you get a group of people together that don't normally get to interact together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of, a lot of jokes and, and laughter and fun and, you know, real realization that like, you know, the shit that you guys bicker about every day about how hard your job is or how much it sucks when you're hot and like, mm -hmm. be thankful you got a job and yeah. be thankful you got a plate of food tonight right? and a warm bed to get into and dry clothes to put on tomorrow. Amen. So, <clears throat> yeah. Not to get off on a tangent or anything. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good tangent. It's a good <laughs> tangent. Yeah, I got for questions real. for you guys, but I, I don't know if all of them are appropriate for the show. Why They're not? always appropriate for the show. My, yeah. my question is like, how do you, okay, this is not, I mean, we're just, just pretend this is behind the scenes, I guess, if you're watching. But Off the record. The, the, the market, the market, obviously we're being hit with a recession um, and there's stuff going on. It's going to affect the buyers of exterior products and services um, it, and potentially could hold some things back. So what is your guys' market outlook? in general for roofing and exterior remodeling and how do you think that will affect your company and why that's a great question it's do, a really do great you want question to answer that or um, do you want to answer that so i don't think because okay so we're a little bit different tim um mm -hmm. we have our, our our irons in so many different fires man um yeah. we have a leader that 
experience 2008. Um, yeah. And thank God he's as paranoid as he is about that shit. Um, <laughs> dude, I, I've been, I'm not, yeah. I'm not lying to him. He's been talking yeah. about this for two years, three years. Yeah. He's been talking about yeah. this and getting us ready for this. Um, we've spread our irons into so many different fires. Um, we have a very large presence in new construction. Um, we're in with investors. Um, we do a lot of retail work now. You know, we've what about built that roofing up. in general? Like, if you for, for me, because I'm because yeah, I'm serving so many roofers across the country. Do you think it's going to be a pretty big hit, or what do you guys think? Listen, on, I think it's going to be a hit. Now? If if you got all your eggs in one basket, I feel like you could be affected by this, man. Yeah. If you're yeah. not if, if you're not paying things off and you're not taking advantage of where we were and where we've been for the past, you know, however many months. And you're yeah. just going to wait until shit's bad to start to start doing something. Then, yeah, you're probably yeah. going to be affected by it. But I mean, nothing beats hard work. Yeah. You know, yeah. go out well, and get it. Well, I think those who um, I'll be honest with you right now is probably the perfect time to start a roofing business. Yeah. Right. If 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 you can start and stay lean and mean. Right. Mm -hmm. OK. And like Chris touched on, we so we've gone to the recession. Right. We've learned how to do a lot with very little, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we've positioned ourselves, like Chris has said, in, in a way that we are, we do commercial work. We do uh, residential new construction. We do uh, commercial new construction. We, we're mm -hmm. tied in with probably some of the country's largest at this point in time investors, mm -hmm. right? That, mm -hmm. that buy, sell, hold, flip 500 plus homes a year at this point in time, plus mm -hmm. build rental properties, duplexes, single families, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Yeah. Um, so we, we've, we've positioned ourselves like typically during a recession, commercial work. So uh, like new construction, residential new construction usually starts to dip first. Right. And what mm -hmm. comes behind that about a year later is the uh, commercial. Right. So whether How is the that going to dip if there wasn't, the, there wasn't enough supply yeah, you know, it has right. to be a little different than 2009, right? Like it is. It's it is. way different. Because, yeah, it's, it's way well, there's different. There's something else different. happening, and it's just kind of trying to figure out like how much is our homeowners going to stop? Like, what are they going to stop spending? It? Like, and it's what not, are they? I yeah. don't think. It's well, personal, see right? the difference now. Okay, so what what hasn't happened yet is in, unemployment still down every a lot of people yeah. still have jobs right mm -hmm. so that's yeah. the difference right there so there's still a lot of money out there right yes interest rates have gone up but those who have jobs have good jobs and better paying jobs than there was yeah. pre-pandemic right so yeah. people are making more money right mm -hmm. and like you said right now we're experiencing the the millennial generation is the largest generation that we have ever seen in anyone's lifetime right Mm -hmm. So they need homes, whether it be a rental property, whether it be new construction. And let's let let's face it, right? They don't know what a two point three five percent interest rate looks like. They heard of it, but now they're buying homes. And then the other cool thing is, is generation. I got Z. in at two point seven, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you, bud. I'm at two thirty. <laughs> uh, but um, so now you got Generation Z, right? The 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds that are coming up and also buying homes. Guess what? They need houses too. So now, right in front of them, we got the largest generation of people, yeah. right? And what's cool about that is, is like they don't necessarily want single family homes, but they want they they want that condominium shit. They don't know how to use a mower. They don't want to mow. They don't mm -hmm. want to plow snow. They don't want to shovel snow. So they're 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 buying townhomes, and and a lot of people have already switched, pivoted, from you know, especially with the pandemic. Well, with the pandemic, they wanted single family homes because everybody was working from home. But now we're kind of like pivoted back over right. to multifamily stuff, right? You know, so you're basically telling. I feel like you're telling me the macro trends for exterior remodeling are good. Yes, yes. Even, I'm though, sorry. even though that, yeah. Even yeah, though there might be a little bit of a hit here for a second, if, if this, yes. I think it's apprehension. It's, it's money stable. spending apprehension. It's going to have to stabilize at some yeah. point in time, right? right. It, it, it's going to have to. And I feel like we're kind of, I don't want to say, I think we're already starting to feel it. I think people are, are, are haven't gotten afraid yet to, to stop spending money, I guess, is yeah. for lack of better terms. And the cool thing is, and I'm not saying that roofing is recession proof, but it's a necessity. Yeah. And we experienced yeah. that back in 2020. When the phone continued to keep ringing and every time it fucking rang and the phone rang, well, they need a roof. 
they need to they need to protect in in, in any yeah. recession there ever is. Okay, so let's say new homes do slow down, right? That's okay because people are going to stay in their existing home and are going to remodel it. So yeah. remodeling will always be something. And if you offer financing and if you've gotten out in front of it and have been able to get that brand awareness and, and you started your SEO six to 12 months ago and all of these things that you guys have been talking about for the past several years, if these contractors have gotten out in front of it, like by the time they start talking about a recession, which will probably be the first quarter of next year, it's already too late. So if you're deciding like, oh, I better get my SEOs and my Google AdWords and, and, and pump this up and pump that up. It's probably going to be too late. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. David Bruno brought up a really good point that, you know, Todd just kind of touched on. Um, he said there's still a lot of discretionary income out there and banks and federal credit unions are still pushing relatively aggressive home equity lines of credit to allow for exterior and internal home projects. So mm-hmm. no matter what, whether let, let's face it. Okay. When you're talking about exterior services, people are either buying homes or they're fixing their homes up. Mm-hmm. So either, either way, unless the money disappears and the whole thing with 2008 was because they were giving loans to people that had no business getting a loan. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So the, the money is there. So yeah. it's, it's either, I feel like if it shifts away from new construction and, and home buying, it's going to shift towards, Retail. Retail. I mean, so either way, man, the, the best advice is. Hey, this is what I want to hear. This, this is all the stuff I want to hear. I want to hear that you guys are going to do well. That's, oh, that's dude, good for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We, there, and again, you, you got to You had to position yourself and get ready for change. If, if mm-hmm. again, it goes back to change. Yeah. You got to be nimble. Ready. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And, and, and I, I knew that like I saw a big 10X Grant Cardone guy. Uh-huh. And he, he talks about reset. I didn't really, I didn't, I was like a, a worker bee. I was a, um, what do you say? A valet. And then I, you know, worked at like, just like those types of jobs when I was like in the, the previous, uh, 2008, 2009. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and, it, but he went through it with, you know, his business and Grant Cardone just talks a lot about like the best way to combat that is going really hard. If you go really hard, let's say in your marketing or different things, like if you go really, really hard, way past what other people think is reasonable, uh-huh. then when it when it comes down to it, when it, you didn't need to, because I always, I push, I mean, people, I was taught, you got to push, push, push all the time, even when you don't need to. And then if there is a hit, you're still above most of the people. So like hook agency is ridiculously aggressive with our marketing. Do I need to be this aggressive? I don't know that I do. I mean, like a lot Not of our, a lot, yeah, a lot of our stuff is like spread by word of mouth. Like we have the best, if we have great clients, if we have great roofing businesses that we've served, they tell the other, you know, it tends to be a little bit more of that, but like, it just makes us less like likely to get hit in a recession. That's what I, that's how I grew up in business thinking about that. And Me so, too. That's, I just think that's people what, should go yeah. hard on their marketing yeah, we, to like combat that stuff. Exactly. So we've we've probably I know for a fact that we've probably spent twice as much as what people put in their budget for mm. for marketing each year, and we've doubled down, doubled down, doubled down. I'm not going to say. Come on, I want to. I want to hear. Yeah, I'm not going to say. <laughs> okay, I, I, I won't say mine either then. Yeah, I'm not going to say. You got to be loud. Yeah, but I think. Yeah, exactly. I but feel it, like it's it, it, yeah, it's a it's good bit. It, it's a good yeah. bit. Um, and, and it's been fun. It's been fun marketing and finding matrix on what works and what doesn't work or, you know, but everything works to a certain extent. And I think as yeah. any marketing agent or, or promoter of marketing yeah. knows that any type of marketing works, all of it works. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So we, we've tried the fishnet approach. The only thing that we don't do is radio and TV yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's probably more of a, a winter time thing because most people are home hibernating at, you know, in the evenings and stuff like that. So if you're going to run TV ads, run it during the winter months and stuff like that, take down the billboards and stuff like that. Cause again, people are just traveling to and from work. They're not out gallivanting and stuff like that, especially up here in the North. I like that um, you called that a fishnet approach. Yeah. The fishnet, you go out and you, you just, it's kind of throw some shit on the wall and see what sticks, mm-hmm. you know, I like kinda, that hook approach. Cause it's, you know, you're, getting right yeah. in there you know you know what you spent and you know what you got yeah. back that's yeah. the beautiful thing about digital like i mean i believe in billboards i believe in tv i believe in radio but right. the beautiful thing about digital is you really get that kind of like i know i spent this much and i know i got this much and it's very clear 
That's, yes. That's the beautiful thing about digital. But I don't, I'm, you know, we've, I've said a lot about our services, so I won't, yeah. I won't promote yeah. it anymore. Yeah, it's great. And you're right. I mean, digital is easier to track. I mean, unless you have a different phone number on every single billboard, mm -hmm. but you have to accept the fact that that's branding. And there's a difference yeah. between branding and marketing. Not yeah. that a billboard that, that somebody won't call you from a billboard, but typically it's because of that, that 11 or 15 or 23 point touch point that by mm -hmm. the by the 15th billboard and the fifth yard sign and the 18th digital ad and 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 all of those touch points it, it's it's that brand yeah. awareness and if you can afford to do it and, and like i said earlier with having two trucks that that are highly visible and decaled very well people are going to think that you have a dozen trucks on the road mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we get more leads and calls primarily from the amount of sweatshirts that yeah. we say, hey, saw one of your guys standing in, in, in line at, at Rudders, or we saw yeah. one of your trucks at the gas station on a daily basis, on a daily basis, because That's the crazy. presence, mm -hmm. right? And it's that one time spent. I wrapped my truck. Yes, it cost $150,000 to wrap every single piece of shit that we have out in the parking lot, but <laughs> it's paid 10x. Yeah. 10x. Yeah. I mean, it's bought it's uh, it's it was well worth its weight in gold because imagine what two, okay. So you, you we know what two trucks can do, but what what will twenty five trucks do? What will thirty five trucks do that are on the road continuously mm -hmm. on the road? I mean, it's 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 ten x itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. there's all forms of marketing, branding, and 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 but digital ads, yes, that's that's of course that's again that's one of those changes that you have to be accustomed or not get, get accustomed to like, you know, a lot of people, I, I, there's still people that don't have Facebook accounts. There's still owners that won't do a live video. There's still a lot of people out there that just don't know how to, I don't want to use manipulate in a negative, but don't know how to manipulate Google ads, SEOs, mm -hmm. Um, Instagram, TikTok now is huge. And what's cool about TikTok is if we do an ad right here, it's going to cover right here. Unlike mm -hmm. Facebook, you, you know what I mean? You got to get a little more granular with it and, and geo target it, you know, move the area. But what's cool about it is, is you can pinpoint the age group, the neighborhoods, but you got to take the time mm -hmm. and learn how to do it or find somebody that can do it for you. Right. Mm hmm. I like Facebook ads. I'm, you know, I'm a big Google ad guy. I love the Google ads. Right. I like my main thing is like when they're searching, when they're right. searching for you, you want to show up, right? It's that moment right. when they're, I love the, like marketing. I think about intent. What's the intent of somebody getting on Google? And there's a lot of people that are intending to purchase, especially if you show up for certain words. Facebook. I like Facebook. Like I do Facebook ads. You'll see our Facebook ads out here. Uh, but it's like, the intent that's branding to me that's like as good as that's a billboard for me you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. pure lead gen you get some pretty low quality like in my experience like the leads go the lead quality is a little lower i'm not going to rip on facebook ads entirely because i've gotten some leads from facebook ads but i just think what's the intent of getting on facebook it's usually entertainment it's usually yeah. to like hang out like it's not usually like i'm gonna go hey i wonder what home service business i should hire today yeah Facebook groups are a place where roofers and other small businesses should be. You should be in Facebook groups and answering questions and, and being there as a resource. But yeah, Facebook ads in particular. Uh, yeah. There's some, there's some people out there that do them very well though. So there's with all these things um, you know, I think I, I, I've used Carson Nugent uh, for Facebook ads before he's very solid. So uh, if a, a roofer is out there or, Somebody that I think that dude's legit. There's there's a couple other really legit ones out there. There's also, but you know, like you know, the the barrier to entry, just like with roofing, with marketing, the barrier to entry is pretty low. Like you get yeah. a computer, they read one or they they like watch one uh, course, and then boom, two two months later, they're they're popping into your DMs with. You know, can you handle yeah. 17 more roof replacements? So yeah, like, yeah, I just got like takes, three of them yesterday. And yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> that quick. Is that quick? That guy, that guy didn't even know that phrase three months ago, yeah. half the time. You know what I mean? Like, so that's why 
it's just the buried entry with Facebook ads. It seems like there's just a lot of people doing it, and it feels like mm -hmm. it feels like it gets a little like crowded or something with face, like Facebook ad yeah, people. But I agree. Yeah, great agree. point, man. This has been a great show tonight, guys. Been. We're at a we're at an hour and fourteen minutes here. Um, Tim, real quick, man, uh, plug plug the audience here on how someone can get a hold of you. I know that you're. You know, you're not a roofer, but you're in the roofing industry prim yeah. primarily. You know, one of these days we're going to get you up on a roof so you can actually claim the hey, title of a roofer. Hey, I, I actually, I have three videos of me. One, I switched uh, seats with the roofing CEO for a day. I roofed a house for a day and above oh, 90 degree go. weather. You're a roofer. And I, yeah. there and you go. I, um, I shadowed a uh, roofing salesperson for a day. So I'm learning about the industry. I'm like, yeah. I'm in here trying to really learn this stuff. I got all the roofing samples. That's great. Price. I'm trying to learn about as much as I can, but um, yeah, hookagency.com to check us out. And also, if you want to see more roofing memes, follow me at facebook.com slash invigorated, just the word invigorated. And I, I will supply at least a daily roofing meme on average. Yeah, so, he's got uh, fire meme guys. Yeah. I think yeah. I think out of all the groups, man, it's it's you and one other guy. But I, I think yeah. that I see Wait, more who? original posts from you. Who, who's that? Who's oh that? My God, I can't. I can't think of his name. You probably will be able to tell me. You'll probably be able to tell me in the in the roofing solar community. Uh, is it? Is it a Brian? Or, oh. Is it Dan? I can't remember I his name. Him. Whoever it is, I hate him. Let's start the next. Wars. <laughs> the next roofing meme wars. I I've gotten my my second wind. I I was yes. like for a little while there. I was like so sick of doing it. And then, like in this, like this past couple of weeks, I've been like, "Oh, I'm on a roll. I got this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for the next roofing me more. So, whoever wants to challenge me, get at me yeah. at Facebook.com/slash Invigorated. Excellent, yeah. excellent. You never know. I might accept that challenge. All right, let's go, bro. Let's see it. I want to see it. You never know. All right, boys. Well, yeah, man. This has been a great episode. Mm -hmm. TC Backer family, make sure that you uh, you go and follow um, Tim Brown at Hook Agency. Uh, hop on his website. Give that a peep. If you guys got any kind of questions for him, I mean, the man's giving out nuggets for free. So um, he's he's a, a, a sponsor of ours here at, t at Behind the Tool Belt, man. Um, and I absolutely love every time he comes on the f on the yeah. show, man. You you bring great energy. Um, you keep the conversation flowing, man. And we always get end up with great topics. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you at, at RoofCon in person. So. Um, yes, yeah, it's been a great episode. TC backer family. Um, thank you guys for constantly tuning in. Make sure you hop over to our YouTube page and subscribe, please hop over to our YouTube yes. page behind the tool belt and subscribe. It will take you two seconds. Hop over right now. All 11 of you watching right now. I'm literally talking to you to actually you. 10 right now because someone just signed off. Wait a minute. Um, Let me get back but on. hop over there and subscribe if you have not, please. Um, and we will catch everyone next week for episode 145. Whoa. 145 oh, dude, 21 turkey oh yeah we have the 21 turkey salute coming up. but that'll be wednesday too yeah and that's going to be a wednesday i don't remember it, which it, episode it, it is. will always be a wednesday because yes thanksgiving is always I know, thursday but we yeah. did at what our 100th? it was our 100th episode last uh last so 21 what turkey this so year? it's going to be probably like episode 155 or something like that because we're okay. probably about 10 weeks away yeah it's true something okay. like that yeah eight weeks 10 weeks yeah but yeah anyhow so sorry next week wednesday 7 p.m make sure you guys tune in um and we'll see you guys then 7 p.m everyone have a good night see you see you